Well, welcome everybody to Planet Poetry, June 2022. I'm Mark, I'm your host. Planet 20, uh, poet, 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 poetry, Planet Poetry 28 has been going on for over a year now. Uh, it's the concept of an online magazine in which 15 poets will uh, show their work and read their work along as a kind of a different venue uh, on Zoom. A uh, little about myself, uh, I, I'm a native New Yorker. I graduated CCNY in 1971, followed in the trees and at trees in the Sorbonne in Paris. I have seven books of poetry and my latest being The Reflections in the Time of, of Trumpius Maximus, a kind of a, politi a political satire and some serious works in there. And uh, I'm chancellor of the Poetry Academies uh, of, of the Poetry Academy of the Poetry Global Network. We do workshops and we do events like this. We'll be doing festivals in cities as well and, and various events where hybrid type events where we'll have live poets and people on Zoom reading and looking forward to that in all various cities. We have Singapore coming up and Chicago in the, in the uh, spring. So we'll see how things are gonna be going. And I will begin uh, with a different kind of a thing rather uh, then stay on the theme of, of, of the day. I'm gonna go back of time and read from a book called um, 21 Sonnets of a Time and Place. These are five poems and I'll introduce each piece with a couple of moments of music to set the theme. These are all sonnets. Mm -hmm. Soviet Union, Leningrad, 1972. My hair was long, our dress was Woodstock chic. We had a tourist visa for no more than a week. They stared at us with shock and disbelief, a pair of New York hippies on the street. Music of balalaikas filled the parks in the haze of the white night's twilight to a pre-dawn glaze. Venice of the North, healing from Stalin days with streets of vodka drunks walking sideways. Women big as bears polishing the squares, babushkas covering red cheeks and hair. By the wide canals, lovers kissed without a care. It was the Cold War, but smiles were everywhere. They crowded to see our t-shirts, jeans, and jewelry, touching, applauding. We were the new royalty. Brazil, Rio, 1982. From sun, from sun decks above a pink charisma, the Atlantic sprays its moist perfume on the chiseled bodies of Ipanema. The samba sounds begin to bloom. On the mosaic paths surrounding Rio to the costume balls on Covacado, we sold our souls to the sordo drum, initiates of Sayodaj and Corazão. Oh, carnival that delirious fantasia of painted bodies and masks of glitter. What nights of flesh and rock cocaine dancing to dawn in the erotic parade. Far from the stink of the favelas under the open arms of the Redeemer. Italy, Como, 1975 to 2005. My father's found paradise, Lago di Como, that kingdom where privileged and famous go, sipping wine on the ferry from the villa to the push carts in the medieval plaza. There he bought the scarves and perfumes to bear as gifts or stage in his rooms. He was raised so poor in the slums of depression. Here it was my, here was, it was here my father found all consolation. 
returning each summer for 30 years for the dazzling 4th of July celebrations when fireworks and water skiers salute the Americans in Elysium. Each man finds his definition to be, his way to declare, no one's better than me. Dominican Republic, Santiago. This is crazy. Drinking and driving is permitted, encouraged actually. Horns occupy the air. When a traffic cop holds his up his white mitten, don't stop. Go right through. Goats are everywhere. Don't signal while driving. Why tell them your next move? Fresh fruits and roast pork adorn the avenidas, and the women are handsome and sway with the moon. They love baseball and Presidente Cerveza. There's always Pachata, the soul of first kiss, of the soul of first kiss, the premier beso when you're in love and you want to kiss them all. Oh, what bliss, what bliss, the scent of the tropics and the flowered stars above. Things you remember when you live somewhere, and the fantasies you had when you were there. And finally, Paris, France. Half a century ago, by the Pont Mirabeau, the echo of my heel clacked on the, on the quay as the night sweated on the cobblestone. Cloacina misted the Seine with perfumery. The tobacco of fat cigarettes filled the air with smoke rings in praise of a polonaire. I had escaped an America ruled by insolence of an insipid bourgeois cheerfulness. But you cannot become French, mes amis. Write your poems of poignant elegance. You're invited to dream of decadence, but leave when the bank account is empty. La Boheme has its joys and strifes. And go home, go live your life. Thank you. I think you can all unmute yourselves uh, Indeed, after, and if you care to hey. <laughs> like that, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and and uh, indeed, uh, it's not it's not necessary. I don't I don't unmute everybody. Uh, the, the sound of breathing doesn't bother me. But if you know if a dog starts barking, you don't like that. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to share that 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 part of that collection of, of poems. Well, our next poet uh, is uh, Elheim Wolvard is an Afrikaans speaking South African living in the historic walled city of York, uh, United Kingdom. By day, she's the editor in chief of an international medical journal for doctors and nurses who deliver eye care and prevent blindness in challenging environments. Elheim read on a first poem at the York Spoken Word last June and mid January, she had performed online features at Jack, Jack and Uri at uh, David Leo Sirwa's uh, Open Word Online and her sparse with resonant poems drawn on her experience of life, love, and motherhood. She's delighted to have found spiritual home in the spoken word scene, and we're delighted to introduce you as well. Elhan. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. I'm always intrigued to hear how people pronounce my name because I'm an Afrikaans speaking, so it's based on, on Dutch. So this the pronunciation is El Mean. Ah. So like, you know, like call me El and I'm not very mean. <laughs> That helps. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for having me. And I love those poems, Mark. They were so resonant and delicious. Thank you so much. So I'll, um, I'll share screen, take you through just a few of my poems. <clears throat> the first one's called First Light. <clears throat> gravity, oh gravity. Without your graceful pull, where would our limpid lakes, reflecting rivers in the evening glow go? 
dust and sadness. The world is dying, my body crying, but my tears, they don't show. Our world is crying, our bodies dying, but our tears, even if they flow, empathy is empty, sympathy, shampathy. In this lonely land, our tears fall to dust on the shifting sand. Uncle. A poem lurks beneath the surface of my mind. A whale shape bulges up, but the water doesn't break. You were the last. You knew my father's past. You have his calves and ankles, don't you know? His clothes I laugh and silver whiskers too. What did you see when you dived beneath, beneath, beneath the blue? The family were all so proud of you. A Navy diver stronger than the rest. Not even cousin Colin could beat your best. With quiet twinkles in those naughty pale blue eyes, you kept your secrets close with little smiles and barbecues in style. But nothing ever tasted as good as my father in a happy mood. Did you know him before he was sad? Before he was broken? Before he turned bad? Was he good? What, was he kind? Did you still love him or just get by when he had to be daddy and hit you till you cried? Your broken mother made him chief, stole his childhood like a rotten thief. The army made it worse, made of him a shouty sergeant major with lips so thin and terse, who barked orders at children. And when he wanted to impress, would demand a show for special guests, made us play and perform ignorant of the storm building inside of me. <laughs> but over the whale shape, the water bulges, does not break. The whale turns, the water churns, and the ocean swallows it whole. Unbeaten. Anahata, which is the Sanskrit word that literally means unbeaten or unstruck. The blows rain down across my shoulders and soul like autumn leaves released by a tree that has grown tired of their weight. They flutter and settle in the hollows of my collarbones, the dimples in my thighs. I stand, shake them off, stride forward, unbeaten. Hail, 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 moi. Hail, moi, donkey. And the ocean swallows them whole. Wow. Well, thank you for so, so many good moments of your poetry. Uh, really, I think you, when we first met, you told me you were just like starting, you were just beginning, and I couldn't believe that. <laughs> Too good. <laughs> thank thank you. Unfair. Thank you. Thank you very much, El <laughs> Elmi. Our next reader, take a breath, is Leslie Constable, a US-UK citizen who now lives in, in the UK, Mexico, and in Santa Fe. Lifelong rock and roll hippie chick. <laughs> Adventurer, road tripper, activist, modern dancer, poet, painter. She worked as a journalist, art critic, university art gallery curator, and studio arts and art history instructor. Veteran of open mic performance poet, uh, in variety, a whole variety of, of venues, which I've seen her at as well. Currently, uh, Leslie reads six to eight times a week internationally at open Zoom mics. 
widely exhibited painter in the US and Mexico and sells her prints at artisan craft markers in Mexico. Her poems have been published in the US in various journals and anthologies since 1999 with a 2015 collection available on Amazon. Leslie Constable. Hello everyone. Um, I'm hoping this works to share because I'm a little bit, have, have you seen it? Are you seeing it? We're seeing the, uh, the main page with all your various Word documents. Okay, so how do click I on the one, click on the one you want? All right, sorry. Um, sorry. It would say Planet Poetry, June 2022. Uh, yeah, do you want to I'll go? If you can't find it, we can go to the next reader. You can take your time and then just, you know, come back to, uh, after a sec. Okay, I think I will have it in a second. Yeah, sometimes it's best to open up the document that you want. Yeah. So un unshare, open up the document you want, then share, and then click on the document. Yeah. It looks like okay. it's all alphabetical. Just scroll up one more. Um, right. I see it. Yeah, you see it, twenty. Do you see in the, the middle row on the left? Planet Poetry 28. Okay, I've it should say June 2028. Yeah. Sorry, guys. You don't see this? Oh, there it is. You just passed it. It's the middle row, fourth one from the left. I think that's it. This one right here. Planet Poetry 28. Yes, I believe. Yeah, right. Yeah, I see it. No, that's not it. Okay, they're not. Come to take your time. Right. As you come, come back to it, and uh, I'll move on. And you know, you okay, know, take good. Your time, I'm so okay? sorry about or, it. I'm no, so no, sorry. everybody okay. has trouble with Zoom. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our next sorry. poet, let me prepare for him as well, is Barry Wellerstein. Let me put his poems on. Okay. Well, to introduce Barry. Uh, Barry was my uh, mentor in college uh, as some many decades ago in, this, in the early 70s. And I'm so proud too that he's come and honored us uh, with his reading. He's the author of 11 collections of poetry. Most recently, It's About Time. And then 2020, Time on the Move and Tony's Blues. He has made 10 recordings of his poetry with jazz. Most recently, Lisbon Sunrise in 2022. He's an Emiratist professor of literature and creative writing at the City College of City University of New York and the editor at American Book Review. He lives in New York City at Livingston Manor, New York. Thank you very much, Mark. It's good to see you and to see that you've done good. Thank you, Barry. So the first one was triggered by the ongoing war that we're reading about and suffering. It's called Charlie's in Danger. Before the war, Charlie studied war maps, formations of troops, forward positions, and rocks to hide behind. Run out of pushpins, he lowered the map onto a table and trademarks only a few could follow, and made marks only a few could follow. There was a noise on the radio about the old maps becoming obsolete, and then there was static. From outside his window, he sees a million toy soldiers advancing and a giant hand moving them across a new landscape over cities, towns, even hills, and into the village square. The hand is gloved, or the other hand snaps its fingers to a martial beat. Death substitutes for time. The light at the end of the tunnel is an ongoing, oncoming train is a phrase found in the public domain. And the light gets brighter as the train comes closer and louder. Death pulls the cars along the track. So watch this, 
A bullet named time heads towards death, but death ducks, straightens up, brushes off the perennial dust and kills time temporarily. Time's remnants march on. Is this line of thought a waste of time? No. Only when the line stops is time wasted. Not on this watch. Mm. So this one is a, a more cheerful note, I hope. Speedo. And there was a, a rock and roll song sung by the Cadillacs in the 1950s called Speedo. Very few of you can remember that one, but it's worth Googling. Speedo. Monday, he awoke early. Amazed by the mirror, he saw himself as wing-footed Mercury, first around the block, sipping coffee on the fly, wiping a sleeve across his godly mouth. He sensed Tuesday in his stride, checked the clock for Wednesday, dove into a deep minute's doze before waking in time to jump up and dance around with Thursday. Friday was just as fleeting, just as frantic. At noon, he checked the timepiece and midnight whispered, easy. That was a swift week, he thought. Then his inner guide beckoned softly, moderate your pace, relax your time. With the weekend, everything changed. The slow gin fizz imbibed with company, relaxed conversational chatter, Chopin in the air. Hmm. And I'll end with this, the cough. He had a cough loud enough to wake the dead. However, nothing happened. The dead stayed down. But from the mound, he spied a beckoning finger. He looked the other way, walked a distance, and then hacked so loud it nearly took his breath away. The roadway trembled, frightened his friends. That mordant finger, busy before, with his come hither intent, suddenly ceased its action. The danger moved elsewhere, his cough now barely audible, a shallow rasping only. The why within the worry was fleeting and then forgotten until that rasp returned to become a rattle, revived, and then bingo, the eternal promise reasserted itself and the one with the cough felt at ease. Thank you. And thanks for the snap. Bingo. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Wonderful stuff. Thank you. Okay, take a breath. Leslie, do I think you're are you are you ready or yes, give it yeah, a try? Well, yeah, do I click the share on the actual document? You should have the document uh, on your uh, desktop uh, yeah. waiting for you, and then you'll then you just hit the share button. Hit mm -hmm. that document, and you'll see a little thing that says share, probably in blue. It says on right. OneDrive. So is that? I'm okay. not sure. Hit share screen at the bottom of, of your Zoom, not on the document. Oh, the bottom of the Zoom. Thank you. OK. Uh -huh. So share on the Zoom. Got it. And then you'll hit. Uh, Desktop, I think. Share, okay. And desktop. Should be the top left one. And then in the bottom right, hit the blue button that says share. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. You got it, okay. Oh, yay, <laughs> okay, great. So, um, 
I'll start. The first one is called The Animate Saturated. Sodden, we have been rained on too much, not yet liquid, not yet soaked to the finest despair, the tips of us, the farthest extremities, the core dry, value dry, excuse me. <laughs> it will take over only the slow baking in the night oven to make us plump up, rising to full volume, the night yet noisy with possibilities of who to blame, assigning fault, the assessment of damage. I argue the onion did, the, uh, excuse me, the oven did not explode and splatter us across the walls of the kitchen. You asked me if you could paint it white when I ask you in response, whatever could be wrong with pistachio green? The questions sincere in nature, I realize on both sides. It is a ploy, the dampness seeping in through the bricks, the walls now slippery wet with the growth of spores inside. I have promised you I will not yet turn liquid, no matter how hard it rains in this desert. The rain to bounce on the pavement so hard, the velocity as it hits pavement to ricochet, reach itself upward, no longer as liquid, but forming as ice white, which does not absorb heat, yet reflect the kitchen to remain unwarm and us not yet dried out, not absorbing the warmth of embrace in the night kitchen. It is magic that which the that the which that is needed the formula which parts skies cleaving valleys forming cliffs burrows of thought there in the place where there was too much thinking that was done it is enough and it is time to wave your goodbyes to leave this island for the mainland walk across the imagined straits the passage that was on foot rather than swim this time i myself will get no more wet than I am now, sodden in the missing of staying when it is time to leave. I listen with my lungs and close my eyes, and I am one gone from this night kitchen. And the second one is, if I can find it, here we go. Images of love, the setting sun. The setting sun seals the kiss of day, Evening the coy lover we are wrapped in, in rapt intent, belief suspended mid motion, all that we know in this moment is love, and in this moment of stillness waiting for the next, we move towards the inevitable that the day ends and waits the new dawn, night cloaking us the intent to only in this moment hover between these worlds, that of day into night, us in love, the joy radiating, transcending, us transcending as us together, upward, ever upward into the higher reaches of air to meld, as does the seductive scent of night jasmine, wafting up and joining with sky. Above the trees stand guard, the overarching canopy there a shelter, protecting us stand guard. The birds alight momentarily and swiftly move onward on their way, that we are in this moment in the embrace of all that which is holy, of this I am certain. You know my hand as I know yours, joined as we pass through these frag fragrant gardens, the night birds nesting hidden deep inside our thoughts, sing to the old ones hovering near to us always as we walk also there, remembering the ancient songs of love they knew as we know, now sung to all who walk these paths, the paths leading to nowhere, leading to somewhere until the dawn breaks, glory in, glorious in its excess. I shall meet you at the river, and placing my foot carefully, steadying myself as we lower ourselves down into the small ponga to sit, you at my side, dear one, and we cherish each moment, rocking on the gentle movement of the river as it carries us down. Sitting beside you close, we as one, wrapped by love, wrapped in my love, I rock as do you on the cradle of night until the sun once again emergent shines in the heavens. Mm. And this shortish one simply called interior poem. 
each one a box, a container holding within it things to remind you of yourself. You are made up of containers. Within containers, the inner space holds to it the skin, the skin of facade, the shell protecting the yoke. The same sky that touches me touches you. We kiss wild in the air and I twine round you moving this way, that way before taken by air to be somewhere else. I am not fickle nor unfaithful. The air made me do it and the winds move me back to this container that I am. I will be yours again to be in play with, at play with the breeze, but will I be back? This container I am enclosed in, enclosed with only allows allows only some seepage of essence that releases. Do we initiate or not the containment or the release from it? Have I done my five minutes yet? Uh, close to, is this a long one? It's that long. Mm. <laughs> we, we, I can stop now. Yeah, I think I, I think you 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 uh, you run it, but it's it's so delightful. I mean, your your work is so hypnotic that I you know could get lost in it. Thank you. But but, but I do do appreciate that uh, you know for the sake yeah. of the other poets. But uh, oh, for sure, absolutely. But, but Leslie yeah. will. But Leslie will be back sharing her hypnotic <laughs> poetry. I love reading along with your work as well. It just Thank it you. brings it uh, to life as much as as. You know more to life even for me so i really enjoy that thank you for that thank you mark thanks well our next poet uh is leonard lund a currently living in the chicago area a poet photographer historian and short fictionalist his work has appeared internationally since 1965. so it's too lengthy to to, to go into so leonard there you go actually the uh the bio is short and probably one sentence too long because unless you like what I'm reading you today, it doesn't matter what I've done or where I've done it before. So uh, personal opinion from an artist. Okay, let's start with Arbor and Wine Press. After a landscape by Fra Bartolomeo. This is where you brought me when we wed. I, 15, and not yet quick with child though filled with longings passed down by my mother and her own. You, 18, and poorly educated to a life not set before you in the halls your father brought the tutors to. The copse of trees is thinner now, as is my life these years alone. The room in back where we first took each other with an innocent savagery bordering rape is mine alone, a shrine holding memories that end with you. At the gate, our oldest son and his son, a Tom that came to clear the mice and stayed when they were done, a wine press calling forth the joy of life. The mist grape is as fruitless as imagined lives without this place. Okay. I hear the river singing when I think of you, that early fall in Paris, the water lapping at the broad steps on the left, left bank, gaining and losing intensity as the boats passed. It's all part of our story. We felt hidden in the vague shadows, part of love's misleading blindness. I know we were lost in our kisses, deep in each other's nearness, not oblivious to the world, but taking it as background noise. Closing my eyes reveals you in black belted slacks, a white blouse open deep at the neck, a thin plaid car coat. The thing is, we were never in Paris. We never got as far as fall. Only one of us might have been in love. If it never happened, is a memory a lie? And finally, um, there was a die-in downtown today. A couple hundred students from the university lying crumpled on the street for a full block to speak without words against the violence encroaching deeper each day 
into the landscape of life. And the evening news said more about the inconvenience caused. I thought of a remote taxiway at the airport filled with the supposedly injured and dying, all in rough makeup as part of a crash drill for surrounding EMS, ambulances and fire trucks everywhere, and how the airlines didn't want arriving Paris passengers scared by thinking to be real. Which led me, 50 years after, to the carnage on the flight deck when they flew in six medevac birds, all loaded, the real blood, from real wounds, bathing real bodies. The efforts at triage and the clergy trying to at least save souls. How that never made the news at all until just now. Thank you. Well, Leonard, thank you. Interesting, you're using the, the, the prose poem form, because had you not presented it on the page, I, I wouldn't have known that it's very interesting how you did that. It, it really works very well in a very difficult medium. Thank you. Thank you. I think, we'll, I think we all enjoyed that. We want a larger a bio next time. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> okay. Uh, our next poet, David, are you set? You, you just got in. I. Uh, you're on the list for next. I'm good. I'm okay. Set. Videos on. There you go, David. Your stuff is ready. Based in Queens, my original hunting ground. Poet, translator, occasional actor, director. Studied uh, Francophone literature. Focused on poetry and theater. Voracious reader of film, TV, and comic book buff. Knows more about French hip hop than you could possibly imagine. And you can find him on Waxy and Poetic, which is a great site as well. Translator and friend, David Siller. Thank you. Um, so I guess before I get started, um, I, I just have two pieces today. Um, I uh, definitely ascribe to the notion that all poetry is political and um, the world is a crazy place these days. So um, my political act today is to remind us of um, two things that we should always hold on to the imagination and uh, memory. This first poem is called Answering a Question with a Question. When you ask me, wouldn't it be better to be in love than write about being in love? As in, have her calm pup, cup my bare knee just for balance during a park bench kiss. Or write about the way a fingertip slips in sweat drips as they curl cues at the small of her back. As in, hearing her tender everythings murmured millimeters from oracle and tragus curving into the cochlea drum beating her breath as loud as hot summer breezes or scribbling the automata poetics stenographic nightmare that transcription of intimate insistent intransigences a wheeze a gasp a, <whistles> a vibrato oh staccato ah 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 fortissimo as in, I might as well be Cyrano Precision, capturing and remembering the orange blossom and honey in her hair, the tea tree oil tingling nostrils, enticing erotic essences, or nose notes in a wine journal that never logged a single swirled scent, but instead her creams of lavender and lemongrass, hints of mint, a whiff of wet flesh, fresh rain, as in the palate discerning butterscotch or the coconut toasted on inner thigh, the buttery nuttiness of the nape of the neck, the plump leachy sweetness of parted lips, or the tasting notes in that same journal as if descriptions of Burgundian whites, stone fruit confusions, peach jam, apricot nectar, golden plum, juices dripping down chin and forearm, teeth and tongue a tingle as in subway car crowd glimpse, eyes drawn across a packed theater, walk signal opposite sidewalk distraction, seeing her two seats down at the sushi bar, alabaster skin and abalone melting in my peripheral omakase for the eyes. Or the description read, 
eyes brown and wide as cinnamon, hair as black as Philosopher King's ink, spilled down the naked back of her backless dress, skin as smooth as hope. I ask you, how can any of it be real? And um, uh, this poem is for, uh, for Tommy. Midnight plays midnight in the middle of the cacophony of a bar I frequent. So it was late one night in a sports bar and restaurant, the kind where the TVs are shiny, black, and high def and numerous, hanging on walls like finished frame tableau in an artist's studio, displayed for the visiting curator who may or may not buy any of these finished pieces, but they're showing all the highlights of our modern day mass entertainment with the red and white team gunning past the blue and white striped lads playing the football you play with your feet, and another screen with the blue and red guys smashing the black and silver fellows while they battle for the football you handle with your hands. And on another screen, the orange ball is stuffed in a hoop, and on another, the stick hits the white ball, and you can almost hear on another screen the grunts and racket of shuffling ladies from one side of the clay court to the other, and there's no sound from any of these screens, the aforementioned sports bar opting to pump popular hits through the speakers. And I'm sitting there, flanked by friends, fringed by friends of those friends, and on those speakers, I hear a tribe called Quest Midnight, and everything around me stops. And I'm suddenly whisked back over 20 years to that night in my car where the CD player kept playing track after track on that album, and our heads were nodding in unison and in sync, and we both bust out with intensity. Most rappers don't see it, spirit-wise. Musically, you gotta be it. And I reach to turn down the volume, and we both look at each other to agree that even then we felt a crisis in hip-hop coming on, and that our favorite MCs and DJs weren't getting the attention and accolades they deserved, because lesser cats with weaker raps were easier to play on the radio, and thank goodness we could hit the track back button and hear Midnight again return to a ward tour as an app send-off as we leave the parking lot behind the theater and turn north to take you home. And it's late in this sports bar, and I think how long you've been gone, and I try to remember our last conversation as I replay in my mind the montage sequence of how we lost touch after leaving junior college, and phone calls every couple of months changed to a couple of calls a year, and how we used to see each other every day and had lunch together often, and how we used to play the dozens between classes and before rehearsals, and never worrying for one second that your, your mama jokes or my mama jokes would cut to the quick. And I think now that subconsciously I carry on these quick quips with my sister and friends and coworkers in a nod to your absence, though no one ever has the comebacks you did, and some lack the good sense to remember it's all in jest. And just as midnight starts its second verse here in this sports bar with the blonde bombshell bartender whose bright white smile reminds me of yours, I think about how great it'd be for you to be in the chair beside me, egging me on to flirt with said bartender, inflating the courage and the ego in me the way my tall beer wouldn't. And I wonder if you'd be surprised at the introvert I've become and my tendency to sit quietly and observe and be Q-tip's nocturnal animal. And I think if you were here, you'd think about putting some poetry to a beat. And then I remember that time listening to Guru rap about it being mostly the voice and you looking at me to say, I had the voice and laughing and pumping your fist before giving me a high five. And that night is on my mind. The night is on my mind. The sun will still shine. And I remember I'm stuck in this sports bar late on a Sunday night and I'm two beers and two shots in, but no one knows I'm back in the godforsaken East Texas city, pulling my own CL smooth, reminiscing over you because a tribe called Quest called you back from the past. And here I am in that sports bar thinking how boys to men told us how hard it would be and how hard it is now to think that I never really told you. And despite all these TVs and the eye-catching blonde pouring another pint, the night makes the aura. The sports bar, the soundtrack, and outside, the way the moon dangles in the midnight sky, and the stars dance around. Hey, yo, I think it's fly. And I think the memory has that intensity, and I nod my head, still in unison to yours, thinking you'll see it, knowing you'll see it. And then I slow down as the song fades into some more current, obnoxious hit. And the night is on my mind. The sun will still shine. But the night is on my mind. And you still shine. And the night is on my mind. That night is on my mind, the night. Thank you. Indeed, it's 
it takes some, quite a craft to sustain such a long poem, but I think you, you pulled it off. It really, Thank you. and the, one of the great joys I find of this uh, event is that we can go back and, uh, and see it, you know, on YouTube. It says it's great poetry, as we say often, uh, the great prose makes you want to turn the page, you know, to get into the story, but great poetry wants to keep you on the page. <laughs> and can go over it again and again. So there's so much of the poems which we heard today, which allow us to do that. And that was uh, quite a performance. I, I never, I never had a, heard you read such long poems. They're most, <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's really, that's a tough one to do. And great job, really Thank interesting. You. Oh, I was right there with you. That's great. I can hear the music, and you could speed up because I could read along, so I yeah. could, you know, catch you in there. Very good. Well, thank you. Well, our, our next reader is um, is uh, R.A. Ruda, uh, Ruda with a soft D, almost a T-H at the end, <laughs> Rose, her pen name. Uh, has been writing poetry and prose since her first haiku in fourth grade. Since then, she's lived and worked in 19% of the countries of the world, starving off boredom with, as a classical musician, nutritionalist, tourist, tourism consultant, conference organizer, paralegal for refugee cases, sailing old wooden boats, and even as a writer and editor, proud grandmother and unrepentant Red Sox fan. Sorry about that, but that's, a, you know, from New York, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and a Red Sox fan. She now lives in a farm in the Canadian Maritimes, winner of the San Gabriel Poetry Festival. Ruda's book, Silence on the Bells, will be available in August. She can be found online, print collections such as Creative Juices 22, L Expressions LA, Planet Poetry here, and Global Poetry Network's Bottom Up. So, Ruda, thank you. It's R A Ruath. Ruath is sort of a TH kind of a sound, and it's Gaelic for redhead. Mm. So I'm going to share the screen. I have two sets of three and then one to tie them together. The first three are pleasant and erotic. The next three, not so pleasant. And then the healing one at the end. Always. You warm me every night. Every morning, you are the heat I crave. I cup you in my hands, feeling the liquid heat inside, growing in intensity the longer I hold you. I raise you to my lips, gently tasting the ferocity lying in wait to be swallowed. I open my throat, inviting you to pour yourself down and down with honeyed healing. You become my breasts, my heart, my belly, deeper and lower until you make my toes glow. You are the heat I crave, morning and night. I love you in me, my cup of tea. Conversation. Do you talk to my body with your tongue? Explore lick by lick every nook and cranny, conversing with my skin, in and out, back and forth, up and down, around, around, around. Do you talk to my body with your tongue? Poetic rhymes and flesh, mapping my arousal with goosebumps, gourmet on the prowl for exotic, rare, sweet and salty, juicy, choicest, juicy morsels of most precious me. You talk to my body with your tongue. Slide and glide, jazz glissando, give me hot night shivers, walk my bass line endlessly improvising on the melodies you make me sing. Do you talk to my body with your tongue? Culinary delights. The smell of garlic grows around us infusing our fingers as we peel the cloves one by one. They are smooth, round, each clove cleaving to the next, filling our hands. We chop and my hair falls across my face. I reach up to brush it back, sucking on my fingers first. Bitter and fiery it is, heating up my mouth, surprising me with its intensity. You laughed softly, wrapping an arm around my neck, Feeding me a clove only halfway, you kiss me and bite it in half. Sharing the sting of raw garlic, we start to cook.
living erotically, sensing and feeling the world always has a dark side as well. Merit badge. When I was 10, in my green uniform with matching cap and sash, I dreamed of leading my troop with honor and courage. I would be loyal, honest, and helpful sisters together in every adversity. I learned to wrap bandages, twist tourniquets, and treat shock, just in case there was no phone to dial zero for operator. Together we built shelters with the means at hand, made wooden bows and arrows and practiced hunting trees. We knew when to sing or sit quiet as mice. I never knew about a bronze cross for bravery, a merit badge for dying in the crossfire. After all, a soldier's medal for little girls would have sounded strange. We weren't targets yet. And that's in honor of Emery Jogarza, um, who was given the Bronze Cross from the Girl Scouts of America in Nevada. Ratings. In order not to offend the sensibilities of the insensible, the networks do not show the trails of blood decorating slippery schoolroom floors, splattered flesh and bone, adding texture to scientific bulletin boards, vividly colored, abstract improvements to mothers and Memorial Day art collages. Best not to identify with children the way their parents must with DNA, their heads and smiles and dreams blown to pieces. Just mention numbers, targets, victims, shooters, cameos of politicians, thoughts and prayers from an untriggered distance. Move along to the next headline. Nothing to see here. So sad. They say it's so sad. Such a polite word for turning doctors and nurses into legally required murderers. Such a gentle word for dropping the country right off the bottom of the civilized world scale for maternal and prenatal deaths from hemorrhage and sepsis. Such a careful word for raising the suicide rate of rape and incest victims, but hey, we've got the guns for that, so no problem. Such an acceptable word for grieving families without mothers who are dead or jailed for miscarriages and complications of pregnancy. Such a sarcastic word for the jubilant wholesale killing of women in the name of pro-life. They say it's so sad. I live on a farm and it's an incredible cycle of life. And we really pay attention to the times of years. This is called La Beltaine, which is for the summer solstice. La Beltaine, the time of fire, the time of gold, when Aoshi work their magic in sunlit fields wearing new green. Gather the colt's foot blooms, floating them on spring water, a flower remedy to heal the spirit of winter's slumber. Harvest gold dandelions for summer wine, while the early bees find their way, making mead honey. May moon waxes, gilding the twilight. Fairy frogs weave the night, singing their spells between the stars. The bonfires blaze, Libations poured for kin, kind, and crops. Light has come again, blessing thee and me. I apologize, it wasn't solstice, it was May 1st, that's when. What an interesting set of very sensual work and uh... And certainly very uh, politically difficult. Where that sad poem was, I think, will stick with us for a while. It's very strong. Thank you very much.
for that You're reading. Welcome. Thank Maybe you for bringing back. I'm glad yeah. to be back. Yeah. Thank you. And now for a, a total change of pace, I'm going to uh, introduce Robert Fleming, who I met recently as a, a word artist who lives in Lewis, Delaware, United States. Robert followed his mother as a visual artist and his grandfather as a poet. His first thought show was obscene graffiti on a high school bathroom brick wall. He is the 20, 2022 winner of the San Gabriel Valley California Broadside One Poem and the 2021 winner of the Best of Mad Swirl Poetry. The very unique style of Robert Fleming. Robert. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Fleming, a word artist from Delaware. Uh, now people are calling uh, word artist poetry visual poetry. And I'm gonna share some of the tools that people use in uh, visual poetry. I need to share my screen. Here we go. Um, I'm gonna first share some poems with strike throughs and layers, which are two of the tools. Uh, my first poem is called Gay Resume. Anal sex pains you, can fight in a war, sperm stains you, political change abhor. Marriages are lawful, commitments break, shallow men awful, might as well be straight. And my next poem shows uh, a, a more advanced use of, of strike through, um, through uh, using the extinct and the evolve strike through images. And then the concept of layers where the extinct and evolve are in the foreground above the Statue of Liberty and there is text above the skulls of dinosaurs. Uh, the words for this are wrong species survive, asteroid kills dinos, saves humans. And then I will share um, another poem with another concept, which is a border or a barrier, which is being used in uh, visual poems. And I'm first sharing um, a text a text poem uh, because it's easier to do that. A Tale of Two Toms. Tom, human, holiday, eat, Thanksgiving. Tom, turkey, execution, eaten, ungrateful taking. And in this poem, I'm using the slash as a barrier or border between the human and the turkey. And I will share a more advanced use of the border um, and the barrier. Um, this poem is, in, is inspired by Robert Frost's poem, A uh, Mending Wall. His line, fences make good neighbors. So on the left side, fences aren't enough when a weeping willow weeps over, a border collie digs under, a seven-year-old boy shortcuts. A wind eye blows a trampoline. On the upper right, fences are too much when you need a cup of sugar. Your bull lost its thrust. Your child meets the boy next door. You have a 3 a.m. heart attack. And I'll, I'll share just a little bit of the tools which I use uh, to create this. Um, 
the original images of the fences were taken from images that I found on Google. And then I removed the background using Adobe background um, remover. Um, I'm also converting the color of the images from color to black and white. And then I put it all together in a web package called Canva. And thank you for letting me see, uh, show you some of my visual poems. And I hope that you'll try to, uh, on, a simp on a starting point, try to use some of the elements like a strike through or uh, a backslash in a text poem. Greetings from Delaware. Oh. Well, I think uh, we all found that rather just fascinating. It's just uh, so uncommon to uh, to get such an insight into how this stuff is done. We might see it around, you know, various poetry journals, and sometimes not know how to make heads or tails of it. So, I yeah. really appreciate that. It was looking forward to seeing that again as well. Thanks, Robert. That's great. Very, very fascinating. It's great because we so often think of poetry as music, but actually, poetry describes so much visual stuff that to make it visual like that and bring the poetry almost to the background is really cool. Thank you. I'll be putting the file, the accessible file in the chat if you'd like to have a copy of it also. Well, thank you, sure. Okay, our next uh, poet is Prasa Sterling. Alibians conclude corporate international relations, theater performance, art, music, graphic arts, and discussing African art with visitors to the Smithsonian. A native of Galveston, a native of Galveston Texas, he lived in New Orleans, Paris, and Florence before Washington, D.C. He's been a longtime participant of a poetry group, which uh, I host uh, at, as a, a workshop with David and a bunch of others. So I've known Prosser a long time. He's a great word painter, and I think we'll all enjoy his stuff amazingly. Go ahead, Prosser. Thanks, Mark, <clears throat> for making me part of this again. <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> I hope it does not distract us too much, and I hope it's not... Um, Hope it's not Barry's cough. Uh, why not start with an ekfractic, ekfractic, how do you say it? <clears throat> ekfractic. Yes, <laughs> easy for you to say. Why not start with, a, with one of those? <clears throat> off Kanagawa, under the wave of Off Kanagawa by Hokusai around 1830. Gripping the sea, three oshiakure bune, low to the wind, climb arching waves, laced with white cat claws in distant view of Fuji's ghosted cone. Packed fish to the markets of Edo lay flat like mariners, breasting the decks as bows pierce restless blue. For a day and night in Lima, <clears throat> into a land of words unknown, our visas, faded jeans, your sway, all that counts to darken the drum that beats a festejo. A jubilee of stomps and curving skirts is only spoken in the bluish grilled smoke of anticuchos that hovers like honeysuckle cresting old city walls. Below the cliffs, music mutes, where clean combers break in rows, Marcel curling a coastline, brush by steps of estranjeros. The next is uh, Essaouira, uh, which is a town in uh, Morocco on the Atlantic coast. Essaouira. <clears throat> Where ripples mosaic the bay, seagulls cry and klaxon, not to echo the caliph's call, but to ask why I lumber low as a heavy boat weathering to port, to belay its weight to a herringbone cave where map makers wandered, whispered a lighter language in air streams of sound. Will I break through the drab all noble stars cross 
stretching over dunes dull as cold copper where mountains lord the horizon like great stone houses and turban riders pose tall as trees. This will be my way, they say, not the bad roads from Babylon through mudded compounds melted like sugar, but the late skies swallow swift before they scatter to erase the air of all feathered traces. Sextant. Arms entwined in cursive curves, we too, allowed in love, bind and bound our lines, vectoring close and closer to share the same air. Cleaving bosoms vent heat as heads tilt up, squaring degrees of recline to study the grammar of stars, beginning with alpha, then measure our distance again. Vigil, I lie awake, a warden of stone, chattel to darkness, misfit to breathe over pillows, keeping my bounds amid sheets in tornadic worlds, and acquit quietly to half knowing you, but for the involuntary little sounds of a body at rest and the meter of your breath, chaste and tame. It would take more to know your midnight shifts of restless reason, episodic snorts that flare the air in dialogue with wolves, and by morning, an overhead arm framing your head in cameo, a still life of ecstasy by drowning in dreams, come well or come woe. In the same way your hair unsummers through September, our silent sides will turn about before Prosecco misses bubble and Caladium loses heart. Two tiger stripes alike guard their parallel as I stalk the second half of your nature. Matinal. Delicate portions of lemon and milk measure our waking silent symbols of renewing civilities at morning tea before unlaundered thoughts have broken air, forgiving the stains we make with compliments barely buttered to push the day forward and be once again fleet as lovers who gamble the curb silly and sudden. Mm. And finally, <clears throat> in the West Texas desert, a lazy rain dangles loosely from comatose clouds, kicking up just enough dust of creosote scrub to make the air smell like the inside of an empty bottle left out in the sun. Thank y'all. Oh. Well, thank you. Thank you, Prosser. Sometimes I think you live, you, you, you sleep in, in the tower of words, Dylan Thomas's tower of words somehow. <laughs> That's just wonderful. I mean, I do look forward to, as always, well, I'm always trapped in, in each line of your poetry. I just could spend a, a week there. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, our next poet is uh, somewhat of a celebrity as well, uh, Finn Hall. Finn, hi, where are you? There you are. Hi, Finn uh, is, is is quite an extensive biography. He's a uh, new Pitts logo based poet and artistic organizer extraordinaire, host of Like a Blot from the Blue, as well as regular open mic night at Blue Lamp. Finn is a filmmaker, collaborative writer, performance poet this year, as well as adding a second venue for his blot shows, the the White the White Horse in Strickland, and we're producing the new Pitts logo spoken word festival. He has two solo collections, Once Upon a Time There Was, Now There Isn't, and Solidarity, short collection of rant political poems, two collective collaborative joined up writing, and one, two, and three, where now over 200 writers from around the globe are part of. 
and is well close to 30 pieces published both online and books from Australia, China, India, USA, Canada, and the UK. He is soon publishing a book by 70 different writers aged over 70, and I got one in there. And next year, he will have another collection out. This time, his daughter will be part of it. For several years prior to COVID, he produced and ran Everybody Has a Story, a real life, live storytelling event whose ordinary, where ordinary people told extraordinary stories, stories of their real lives. And one show was part of the 2019 New Art Festival. A known celebrity and uh, personality of Zoom, Finn Hall, I'll share for you. Hey, I never wrote that, by the way. Hey. <laughs> Someone else wrote it for me. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> um, okay. this one is um, yes, fairly new, obviously. Uh, and it's called, uh, I actually wrote it in my taxi last Friday. And it's called America. There's blood on the streets now, there's blood on the sheets as the redundant coat hangers come out of their closets, been lurking away for so long. 50 years without tears, 50 years without worry that your life is in danger, 50 years without a backseat stranger in dimly lit rooms being your only answer. Now women's rights, human's rights are secondary to power and that's not right. And the cry of white middle-class male should not be heard as it's absurd that two fifths don't fit that category. The decision makers, the democracy haters, the common denominator in this hour is power. Control in the name of freedom, control in the name of uncaring as if all babies are born of love and intimate sharing. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. These words mean nothing anymore. And the woman who wrote it is spinning in her grave, I believe, as the fools that rule think of nothing but themselves and are looking through the books of their shelves to see what other laws their egos can overrule. Now, the abuse of women and children and the weak and the poor, the huddled masses yearning to be free, are secondary, as is women's rights they choose, to even discuss with those that care, those that share their lives. Now, all they are is red dress wives, being told what to do with their wombs, as the wealthy can covertly fly to other countries and privately pay for their needs, while the rest must stay and secretly find a backseat room to bleed and hopefully survive. Unless the legal concealed gun in the hands of the scared right-wing coward decides this forlorn wife is a threat to his life. Now, this next one, as you can see, is called Dance While Your light, Lights Are Lit, Darkness Comes Too Soon. It was kind of written in response, I can't remember who it was. Um, I think it was John McMullen, or something. I could be wrong who was uh, decided, it was during the storms and such over stateside that one day the lights were on and the light, next day the lights were off. The power was gone and uh, they were dancing one night when they got uh, a little bit of light. So it's called dance where your lights are lit, darkness comes too soon. You need a dialogue with fear to help you keep your ship on an even keel and help you steer around the rocks whilst not being afraid of the rocks, but be aware of the rocks. The rocks don't know that you are there. You, however, know they exist. But not everything is black and white, but also it's not all psychedelic colours and not everyone's out to get you. Neither does the world owe you a sandwich. You have to make your own sandwich. But if someone offers you a salad for your sandwich, then they might just be offering you salad for your sandwich and not one thing, anything in return, except the simple thank you. With age, they say, comes experience. But experience doesn't come with sitting at home, sitting still, both physically and mentally, sitting alone, prone to, well, nothing. And nothing is more than a state of mind. 
Nothing is a state of being, and being afraid of nothing is nothing short of odd. And just this complex is being afraid of everything. And sadness doesn't always howl. Sometimes it's the whispering voice at the end of the day in your head asking, is there room in your head for one more? And this final one was written earlier on this year, and it's uh, like a lot of people suffer. I will always find myself I'm eternally grateful when I see so many of our poetic and artistic friends who suffer from, um, you know, any kind of mental stress and, and disorder or whatever. I thought this thing's maybe I do because I don't, you know, there's nothing real in that. This one's called Stitch. Some days it's hard to face the reality that the world goes on outside your door while you struggle to get out of bed and stumble, fumble to the kitchen and pour yourself a cup of ambition. The contrition in your head and the condition that led to this place you are now, where indecision is first choice and the small voice inside your head gets louder. The recurring thought prevails that you are stuck between going off or staying on the rails, just waiting to see what train comes first. Another day, another dollar, the silence becomes a holler, uncertainty and confusion. Is your life just an illusion? Getting hard to start out truth from fact, ambiguous and failing. You watch as the last ship is sailing, leaving the safety of the harbour, leaving you behind, with your mind in constant turmoil, hardly knowing what is up, always feeling lowly, feeling down, no matter how you attempt to alter your attitude still falters, causing oscillation and dilemma, hoping the line is not already crossed. And it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to seek out help. There are those who will offer you a hand. Be aware that all is not lost. That you don't have to pay the cost. There are ways to help you get through. So when all is said and done, you know you're not alone. There are people out there who care. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Finn. That was... That's very moving, very interesting how you use that internal rhyme within that prose, uh, prose context as well. But uh, the messages that you portray are certainly hit with a solid, with a solid left hook. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, that's what I tried to do. Thank you. Yeah, uh, knockout punch. Well, our next uh, poet, uh, another. Uh, really exciting performing poet as well as as great poet is Laura Gravel. Originally from Texas, she's performance poet, blogger, and fiction writer, began performing in the 90s in Texas, then Austria and Switzerland, and in recent years, East Midlands, United Kingdom. Recently, she's working on a performance videos online for YouTube viewing during the pandemic. She's co-founder of Poets for Refugees, which has a 2021 collaborative video welcome refugees, migrants, and immigrants called Girl Walking Across Europe. Laura. Thank you, Mark. Let's share the screen here. Okay, the first one is called The Past, which you'll see is about the past and right now. I can't feel my edges as I'm running through the forest falling down on steep paths. No time to brace myself as spruce branches scratch my face. Dark greens watch while outside people run through masked cities where some citizens leap buildings at a single bound without protection as alpha, beta, delta, lambda touch down bird-like just skimming heads, unsuspecting, who duck too late. While real ducks quack happily in lakes and the beaver gnaws down another tree, crash, says the sky, the only one listening for impact. I must stop looking backwards. 
I miss things. The next one is called The Plain Lands. The smell of dust, the yellow haze, the instant sweat, the flitter and flutter of palm trees, the patter of heart and dread. Houston, and soon the dinosaurs will show. And they are dead, those who come mooing, asking for recompense. We give them bananas and locks of our hair, offer purses from Walmart to those who come weeping, asking for band-aids for the bullet wounds. We offer them two for one tacos by Bill, a haircut and toenails at Tammy's, and recommend the salsa at noon to those who wear twigs to disguise their skulls while we eat wool to pronounce the words that they are dead. I find their tracks in the mud, Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus teeth embedded in my head. Follow, follow the bayou calls. Laissez le bon temps rouler. At one, a meeting at the swamp of oil. The rig wades in, the hurricane approaches. Gale force winds are sent to mend, rescind words not well meant. Play, dear Triceratops, jump rope. Dare find me, fresh hope. Tell the boy who once loved me that I'll be found on the city street. Tell the boy who kept his hands hid deep to pick my bones by the stego humps. And they are dead. These graffitied snouts and tails, still called a cow town by local Long Islanders, too young to recognize primordial. This city left Jim Crow, mooed on to integration, where the Vietnamese have settled Viet Town, a city of restaurant sinks on skyscrapers, on telephone poles, on alligators, that simmer Nguyen's Vietnam War Memorial with crawfish and noodles and pho bin, served hot on Radio Saigon, Houston. Have you seen the harbor open his mouth to yawn? He has swallowed the Frenchman La Salle, the name of your grandmother, NASA and the moon. The dino tracks keep on a coming. Hey, big fella, take a swig of bayou water, take a swig of Texas crude, laissez le bon temps roll. And the last one, to perhaps bring the mood up a little, is Google Hoop Lost. And a Google Hoop is the same as a butt cake in uh, the English-speaking world. So this is uh, Google Hoop Lost. Google Hoop was a time when the days Google hooped along and we laughed and lived with babies and chickens and the goats Google hooping out on the pastures making Google hoop dances and the milk cows sang Google hooping songs while kicking the milker who shouted Google hoop you. Those simple days when Google hoop was our only worry when Google Hoop was our hope. Before we ate, the Google Hoop right up. Before they blamed us for Google Hoopin too much. Before the Hoopin sun went down and we were cast out to search anew for angels. Okay. Try to get out of that. I got you. Well, what a, a, a rich use of metaphor, images, and uh, and surreal togetherness all come, coming together like that. That dinosaur poem, something that really just 
could follow it just a, a, like just like eating a good dinner. <laughs> just don't like <laughs> coming. It's very thank you very much. Thank Sharing you all. Wonderful poetry. A bunch of Texans here tonight, it seems. <laughs> Today. Thank you. It was wonderful. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> well, our next poet, Martin Cun Martin Cunningham, is uh from South Alabama. He's a, a former teaching physician at the University of South Alabama. He's now a stay-at-home parent for sometimes wonderful small people. And he's an expert in heat and humidity. I love that. So welcome, Martin Cunningham. I'll sh oh, you got it. OK, Martin, OK. And mute myself. Here we go. Hey. I don't think that was me. No, I'll, I'll make sure everybody's muted then. That's good. All right. Nice to meet everybody. Let me get started. My first one is the dark. Out in the dark distance, a creature howling. Out in the dark, that distance is looming. Close your eyes, drag your spark across this space until the creature takes note, is bothered. You could be bitten and its bite would jut just out of your finger's touch, come sleeping. Get the creature first through the other yards, over the grass that hides the graves they dig, over the paths we've all woven, chase it, stop. Find among your ruts the gritty rind of doubt that will line the gut like gristle. Find a spot, any vacancy where dirt's as soft as fontanelles, ripe for digging. Now dig deep, dig till sleep wants for waking. Place it, place the rind, a seed that needs sowing. Cover it, cover it up till the mound covers the sound of the seed now yipping. Mm -hmm. Could you make it a, a little bit larger or we can all use the view options. You can increase our, we can all increase our screens. Thank you, Robert. Martin. Is it, uh, is it bigger for y'all now? A little bit, uh, maybe go ahead more if you could uh, hit that, that function. There. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Please. Uh, my next is ground and ground. My father's cemetery, bland, all short grass and sunshine, with dry clay clumps spread across fields not fully sown. His passing, our passing set, as sure as Jupiter's moons, risings, fallings about their planet. When my circle stops, dig me in ground that's sated. Let there be trees and shrubs and shade. Let my atoms reach for roots and vines and climb up mosses. Look for me when the sun and shadow dapple. Listen with me there. The ward. I close the door on two, soon to be one. The oncologist's work is done. The black crepe is being hung. The friends and neighbors bringing dinner list is being filled. I write the order to discontinue all vitals checks. The children to grandparents sent, the arrangements at the funeral home complete. The priest lies in wait. I write the order to discontinue the IV. I open the door to find, now that the one has become untethered, the two have crawled in bed together, snugged in like a sleepover. They smile in unison and say, thank you. I guess for fulfilling these last requests, like you need permission to let love in till the end. I close the door on two, now one. And next is left out. Wooden pell, forgotten, outside the shed, across the field, untended. Wooden pell, near rotten, held tight by two red-brown metal bands, rusted. Wooden pell, obstinate, grass piles around, but only dirt underneath. Wooden pell, water filled, and animals reprieve once a time long ago. Wooden pels waters jostle during every rainstorm, each bringing, 
each spilling, each meaningless. Wooden Pell Rest. My last is the bench. I'm looking over the waters of the bay, furious. Moments begin their march, unfurled from tombs to sunder, to men, to block. Listen, on this bitch I'm sitting, we sat, but now I'm white hot. The waters lap, I'm walling it off. The waters creep, I sit savoring the sear of bleakness. I drove, leaving you at the door, pleading. I drove and drove, then parked here. I left the door open to hear the music. There are words to a song playing. Along those waters, among it, straddling it, lies a desire that persists. This world's weave begins to leave. I'm now searching with other ears. The water, this bench, our bench, all reaching. Listen, we sat here, we have sat here, the kids playing on that playground, now tumbled down. It is late evening, it was then as well, both days colors fading amber. Their playing fills in the blank dot to dot spaces of a life we have drawn, have dreamt. The scenes bleed, their joyful playing blends with now. The evening, traffic distance on the byway, drumming, the kids banging on the metal slides, singing, the swarm of goals, their last peeling, our bench now swallowing, a sadness, the paint now peeling, a sadness like raindrops on a fading back porch. Moments weave, dip, soar, touch down at now. Now, which sits as a needle sits on vinyl. Now, goals dropping on and taking off from a food wrapper. We held hands then, they're playing. The song now plays, peeling back the paint, home can be sound still. It is there, it is theirs, it is ours. We sat on this bench where I chose to drive to and sit, listen. Mm. Mm. I was very compelling for myself, really. Thank you. That was the beautiful imagery and good control of, of the craft as, as you presented your, your soul there. Really good stuff. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh, well, we have three more poets left and always at the tail end. And certainly uh, thank you all for waiting around and for enjoying our, our stuff tonight. Our next poet is, is uh, Dana Giddings, whom I've known for so many years. Uh, when we met uh, and was running the workshops in, live in Washington, D.C. Uh, she is a poet from Washington, D.C., who is currently living in Santiago de Chile. She's working on a poetry collection about how a shared thread of compulsivity can link, to, can link drinking, behavior, recovery, intimacy, and almost manic process of healing through the vehicle of writing. Her work is most heavily influenced by confessional poets, and she's inspired by eco-poetic, surrealism, psychoanalytic theory, and spoken words. And she's been featured in uh, Abridged, Avatar, The Hill Rag, uh, Ink Blots, which is a publication that we put out from the DC Poetry Collective a couple of times, Under the Bashu, Failed Haiku, and a journal of, Ink of English, Senru. Donna enjoys pursuing flea markets and used bookstores along long afternoons, writing outside at coffee shops, and analyzing psycho, psychological horror films in addition to writing poetry. She maintained an educational blog on alcohol sobriety that can be explored at a, at a, uh, a link that I'll put in the chat. Thank you. Dana. Oh, I'm gonna take myself off mute. Thank you, Mark. And I will one up the uh, frog in Prosser's throat because I actually do have COVID right now. I tested positive over the weekend, so. Um, <laughs> Suffering from that, hopefully, maybe it'll add some character to my reading. And I promise I'm not saying that just so you'll like my poems too, <laughs> out of sympathy. Um, I clicked a bunch of things and hopefully I ended up sharing my screen. Did that work here? Yes. Okay, great. All right, and I'm reading tonight a couple of new poems, a couple of ones that I haven't read yet. So it'll be interesting to see a response or reaction, um, see if people love or hate them. So, <laughs> all right, here we go. 
dark dance. At some point, the poem must separate itself from the dark dance below, float to the surface nude, bloodied and bruised, exposed in the sacrilegious sa ceremonies of the sun and clenching the composure of the dirty earth, become cadaver, scavenged by the eyeballs of friend, family, foe, stigma turning story, shame letting go. The next one I'll read is called Poisoning the Well. She was pretty once, not enough, of course. Everything has cracks to be filled. Booze, baby, she bathed in it. Leaned back into the lap of that lone shark. Bad news bitten by all the wrong animals. Comatose charmer, dosed into debt. Bag of bones soaked and poked, aching for an editing of sorts. Knee deep in the teat to be one and done with, dumped in the water, swollen on the shore. Wisdom runs dry, we'll never know why. A quiet, shy, split the skin crib. Ugly and sad, bafflingly had. Sometimes we lose to begin with. Next one is called Imposters. You stare at me like a thing of curiosity, a fraud yet to be spotted, with your head to the side, knuckle pressed to your chin, eyes drawn tight like a trigger to stupefy their target. You're crouched for the hunt, cocked like a riddle too tangled to solve, the incarnation of suave. And here I break, cynic, coward, Sure, I won't suffice. I'm drained of the chase, every pitiful round of adrenal delight and deadly defeat, worming my way into the background. But forget it, I too want a finding. Let me get a finger under your shell, pry it up for a peek. Mimic the way you peel away my fragile skins for a small chance at certainty. Relative impact. In the dirty, beaten nub of the night, two bodies strain into the injury of each other, the bathroom floor splashed with wine. Demons sprawl in shadows on the wall, licking up the suc sickly succulents, leeching on the throbs and thrusts of their hosts' engorged forms. South-seeking magnets that should have repelled, or better yet, never have met plunge into the hole of a screaming secret all the way in on the cold white tile. Drinking the infinite drink to blind themselves as they feel in the dark for a foothold, an open womb in this broke down binge of a reunion. Suckling on the last stabs in the other's chest, they gouge the trunk of the forbidden tree, waiting for the polluted blood to bleed, flaunting the drained bottle of a fuck all at the rising sun of shame and the relative impact of nothing when no one knows. And I'll end on a slightly lighter one. This is God's lever. I was 28 when I first discovered that lever of the gods inside, the latch key of heaven, the fulcrum of faith, the pulley of the ascending soul. I pinned my slippery prayer to the ground and made her answer. Sure, I tilled the red fields of purgatory countless nights, feeling my way along the ground, finger over finger in the pitch black blind. But never had I ever stumbled upon that lever, that lover. I love her. Life is short, but the day is long. I'm making up for years wasted in my prime digging in the dark for lost time. Hmm. Thank you all for letting me share. I'm not sure how to end my share. No, that's okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> wow. That was intense indeed. And to write such deep confessional poetry is, uh, 
is a gift, I suppose, that poetry gives, but it's also, uh, it, it, hurt, it, it hurts and it, it, it's, you know, it comes through. It's one of the gifts of poetry. And it's always great to, to, uh, to experience it from you. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. You got a good audience here. So our last two readers for the night are from far away Malaysia. Our first is a young poet who I've not met was Julian, uh, who will be reading last, who uh, recommended, I certainly introduce uh, Jin, uh, Jin Lee to the group here. And I'm very excited to do so. She's from Malaysia. She spontaneously decided to perform poetry at an open mic one day and has not quite stopped since then. <laughs> Jin? Hi, everyone. I'm gonna share my screen. All right. Okay. Uh, so I'm just just would like to check. I can you see what I'm seeing, which is yes. um, okay, right. So um, I lost my friend to cancer last year, and I uh, wrote this piece. Rest in peace, my dear friend. Your worldly struggles have come to an end. How I wish you could keep walking on this land, but I guess God had for you another plan. I was told that I'm not of your religion, so I wouldn't be welcome into your kingdom, but I'm not religious and I don't mean to be facetious, but if there is such a thing as different afterlives for the different beliefs, is there a common area where anyone could meet? Because if that exists, that would be so sweet. So when my time comes and I go to an afterlife that many speak of, perhaps I could see you in that common area and pick up where we left off. Thank you. Um, so for my second poem, I wrote this when I got just really tired of all of the really sad news around the world. So I wanted to escape. So I created a world in my head. Can we go to where the fairies play, where the aches and pains just melt away? A place where our hands are held to each other instead of smartphones, where perennial winds whisper, welcome to our home, as they zip happily around ancient mountain slopes a place where the symphony of animal activity and the breeze with the leaves and the crunch of the ground beneath our feet fill our weary hearts with joy and hope. And then we look up in awe simply because the same skies that the fairies see glow and morph in shades of colors ever so clearly. And all around us are ancient trees whose gnarled branches are like age-old human fingers that descend to gently caress us while they whisper wisdoms and worldly secrets into our ears. Can I see smiles etched across our faces as we see our reflection in the river while we hear the song of its unpolluted water dance over stones and branches in its watery path that gets bigger and bigger ending in an ocean with whales that jump across the seawater. Can we then just pull up a couple of chairs, eat ice cream and fatty foods, and just read a good goddamn book? Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you. Just read thank a good you. goddamn book. Thank you very much for joining us. That was lovely, Jen, really. Thank you very much. Very strong, thank you. And uh, our last poet of the night, and certainly not least, thank you, Julian, for waiting to, uh, so long. Also from a journalist from Malaysia, it's published in the American Journal, Journal of Poetry, Beltway Poetry, Quarterly, Borderless Journal, among others. He stumbled into poetry accidentally five years ago and uh, turned into a rapid compulsion He's extremely extra extricating of himself from the crash. He's still extricating himself from the crash. Welcome to his recovery. If you wish to support his continued on unhealthy vocation, 
Uh, you can PayPal him and all this information that I can leave in the chat. Julian, I've seen it a lot of open mics. Great poet and welcome, Julian. Hi. Um, share screen. Can you see that poet's insomnia? Yes. Uh, poet's insomnia. It is late and you are awake, stricken by poet's insomnia. You count sheep and stop at one. You wonder how this lone sheep got you. The scene is green, verdant field framed by wooden fences, rolling hills behind. Scratch that. Why is this field so green and verdant? Make it wind swept, dirty olive, long grass, patches of burnt umber. Make the fence mottled, termite infested, rotting like a grounded pirate ship. For that matter, why do hills have to roll? Make them weathered, Miocene, fossil studded. And who does the sheep in the foreground belong to anyway? Surely not Mary. A little bow peep, and why should its fleece be white as snow? Too cliche, make it the color of old lace, flecked parchment, speckled with rust brown. Let a soft breeze blow, lightly at first, then make the wind pick up. The scene darkens, the sky groans, lightning pierces the horizon, rain pours down faster and faster, like slanted glass lances striking targets, and the sheep, your sheep, the one you are counting on morphs into a coyote, no a hyena, no a rabid wolf, fangs bad. It stares directly at you, irises enlarging menacingly two shiny pulsing black pearls. Like cannonballs about to go off, it growls, dripping, saliva, hackles raise about to pounce. And you, you lie there, resurrected, like Lazarus. Fingers reaching for phone to write it all down. Hmm. The second one is uh, my frustrations with uh, getting on TikTok. There is a meme going around the, that says you are not the main character in someone else's story. You are the main character in your own story. I disagree. I think you're not a character, nor a story. This is not fiction, nor Netflix, nor TikTok, nor copycat, poppycock. Although I'm starting to believe you might be poetry. I get that few people get you. They're not equal to your complex equation. You are not the sum of your parts, nor are you whole. You are the genie in genius, the us in Jesus. You are a peripatetic prophet of parabolic parables. You have more cross lines in you than your pierced palms, and your best ones have yet to learn handstands or test the net in trapeze flips. You are line breaks after the stanza bonanza, allowing space to breathe in and breathe out before the breathless triple spin. You are a meditation in escapism, the hypnotic slow-mo tracking, the pause before the applause, the joy maker in a joyless world. But you are also tears, crystallizing on your own screen. You click share and melt into other screens and the world cries back with you in teary, double-eyed emojis. Yet you are not a meme, nor a loop, of screechy lip syncs of, oh no, oh no. A repetitive broken record of scratched dreams, fake filters, and cringy, cute challenges. Yet you are the skip and the ripple. The pebble in a twirl, a dervish dancer soaking up tiny pains in ever-widening concentric circles till all this heartache fades and just disappears. You are a wave in the time-space continuum beckoning us from afar like an old friend greeting every ending with new beginnings, coming even as you are going. 
O poetry, you are not anyone's toy piano, long forgotten or gone to parts unknown. You are the newly discovered lost concerto, here to awaken souls like phantom limbs in perfect legatos and lucid crescendos. You are the spirited turntable in the corner that comes to life all of its own. A needle falls. Do you hear the music? It's our song. Let's dance. Thank you. What a nice poem to end on about us poets. Thank you, thank you, Julia. That was. I got Robert's bell. Oh well, yes. <laughs> that was just uh, great. So I'm going to thank you all. I'm going to stop the uh, recording here.